Good morning. Microphone is on. All right. Thank you, everyone, for uh, coming out. Welcome to Friday at uh, a conference at Las Vegas. Did everyone had a good time last night? That was a pretty muted response, which I'm going to take as a, a yes. People feeling sleepy. I had a nice sit down on the beanbag down there before I came up here and uh, kind of wanted to stay down there, to be honest. But, um, my name is James Smith, and I am an analytics consultant over in London for a company called BizTree. And uh, I also run a, a blog and a design and uh, wall prints store on Etsy, which uh, I have under the, the name SportsCord. Uh, and finally, I'm a Tableau Public Ambassador. So, uh, Johnny Walker and the Tableau Public team asked me to come down and, and talk for 15 minutes a little bit about behind the, the scenes of uh, how I made one of the visualizations that is up in the Tableau Public Viz Gallery. Uh, so I was very excited about this. I'm just kind of combining my passion of uh, using design and working with some data that I'm really interested in, which is, which is sports data. But I'm going to set the context a little bit because sports courts kind of the, the brand that I maintain online and it uh, can be seen as a bit of a strange name sometimes. So just going to talk a little bit about how it got its name. So, when I was growing up, uh, I remember. Does anyone else remember stories like these? It might be an English thing. I'm not really sure. Remember? <laughs> so, how the leopard got its spots. Um, so, I'm just going to very quickly go over how the sports got its cord. So, here is me. Uh, about two and a half years ago, I was uh, sitting in the bath and I had a bit of a, a brainwave, an idea. Um, I thought, I've just started using Tableau software uh, at work and I'm enjoying using it, but I want to learn more about it. And so I thought, I'm going to take something that I'm, I'm really interested in, which is sports data. I'm going to put it into Tableau and I'm going to see what happens, see if I can create some interesting things. Uh, and that has kind of led, ultimately, to what sports Squad became today. So. I've got a uh, little picture of, um, and, and this is going to be a little bit of an ongoing theme. This is a conversation from back in, uh, in March 2017 that I had uh, with my girlfriend. And I showed her the example of something that I've been building. This uh, specific one uh, was built in a software called R. Uh, and I said, well, I've got halfway to making my, my dream plot. I was very excited at this point. And uh, she responded with some positive feedback, which was very kind of her. Uh, said, yeah, is it, is, it, is it difficult to do? Um, and at this point, I was just playing around with some code within our, our software. And uh, for any coders out there, this is kind of the testing and tweaking bit is, is what I spend a lot of my time doing when I'm working within code. So I iterated a few times, and quickly, uh, my girlfriend kind of lost interest in what I was saying and was then asking whether what, what we fancied for dinner instead. Anyway. That then led to the, the first prints that went onto my Etsy store. So the reason why it's called Sports Cord is because my first diagram that I started using was the Cord diagram. So I've iterated it over each year that I've been kind of running the, the little shop on Etsy, starting out with um, that one there. And to be honest, most of the things that have been changing are stuff around the outside. So the titles, I've decided to use different fonts, kind of go into using capitals instead. Um, but all of these, along with other prints and visualizations that I'll make in Tableau, that I'll make in R, or that I'll make in Adobe Illustrator, go up onto my Etsy shop. And the one that you might recognize is the one, oh, there it is, this one here. So this is uh, a piece of work that I spent quite a long time working on a couple of years ago. Uh, I designed all the charts in Tableau, and then I put them into Illustrator, and I, I kind of brought it all together. So, that's a bit of context on what Sports Cord, how it came to be and what it is. Uh, and I will now talk about the Viz itself. So, first, when, when I start looking at uh, designing something for sport, I kind of start with the data. Um, in this case, I pulled it in. Um, there's a really, really handy, any, any Formula One fans out there, there was a great resource called the Airgust Developer API. Uh, and I went and pulled that. Uh, the, all the data from all of the seasons, all of the races, all of the different circuits into R, and then um, that was kind of where I did my data prep and my manipulation. Now, 
I understand that like, we're, we're at Tableau and we love the drag and drop functionality and often actually going out and collecting the data can be a bit of an issue. So if anyone was in the Sports Biz Sunday session yesterday, I um, just want to flag this thing. This is our sports data repository. And this is where we'll put all kinds of different sports data. So anyone interested in anything to do with sports, we're trying to, to build it up. And again, we're, we're kind of using the power of the community. So if anyone else has sports data sets that they want to upload and share with us, then we'll put it onto our website. And this is kind of your, your nice starting point for your designs, finding out what data is out there, and then starting to, to think about what you want to actually go ahead and, and design. So I have my data. Next thing I did was start writing down some questions. So uh, usually I'll do this just on a, on a notepad. I'll just scribble down. If I'm reading this particular visualization, what am I going to be interested in? And it's slightly different to when you're designing a, a business dashboard. You're, you're thinking about who your audience is going to be for your business dashboard. In this case, I don't necessarily know who my audience is going to be. I'm designing for print, um, in this case, a shop, and therefore, I've got a rough idea, my, my audience for this particular one is going to be sports fans, Formula One fans. Um, but I write down things that if I wanted to, to kind of find out some of the statistics and the stats behind um, Formula One, then these are some of the questions that I'd start to ask. So next stage was to put these into some charts. And these are some of the charts that I've, I've used within the Viz. Uh, I do them on separate sheets. I don't try and fit too much onto a, a single sheet, and then I can bring them all into my, my Tableau dashboard or my Illustrator uh, workspace at the end. Um, and just going back to those questions, so some of them have quite a natural fit. Where are the circuits? Um, that kind of suits a map. Um, where do the people come from? I love using shapes in my data viz. Uh, so in this case, I've imported a, there's a really handy uh, icon project where you can get all of the countries, flags from around the world. And kind of using that, you're encoding the data straight away with something that people can recognize, instantly see there's a UK flag, there's a US flag, and so on. Um, but these aren't, they're not particularly exciting charts. Uh, they are, there's a few bar charts in there. Got a few kind of, we've got shapes. We've even got a table with a bit of color to it. So it's not necessarily something that people are going to want to have on their wall, look at on their wall. So that's when I started bringing in uh, some of the more advanced charts to kind of be the, the showcases, the show pieces of the print. So we've got some more text coming up here. Oh, standing on the wrong side of the stage. Um, so this is a, a little tip. I, when, whenever I start to make something, um, I try and get feedback from people that don't really live in the world of data viz. So in this example, I created my first iteration of the chart. I sent it to my girlfriend. I sent it to a few uh, friends and family members. I said, what, what does this mean to you? If you see this, what do you think about it? Um, and luckily, well, it was different to what I thought it looked like, but it was kind of still in the same sphere. So she thought it looked like a racing track. Um, I thought it looked like a wheel. But we're kind of in the same thing. And this is, this is about creating visual metaphors with your design. So it kind of it shows a piece of information in an arty way. It, it's interesting, um, but also it's the kind of thing that would look good on a wall. So I iterated that, um, and then I asked her again, does it make sense? Because as well as being beautiful, it kind of has to have a little bit of functionality. You want to engage the audience to read and actually look at it, but then if they can't understand it, then you've kind of failed on the, on the actual data visualization part of what you're doing. Um, so yeah, again, I reached out. I asked for some feedback. Um, said she didn't understand it, and that was fine. Asked why, and she was able to give me a reason for, for why she didn't understand it. So ultimately, I took that on board. And this is the, the kind of first interesting -y looking chart in the, uh, in the F1 viz. Next up, I needed a centerpiece. So for me, that was uh, going to be another kind of not out the box visualization. That one was the, the Sankey uh, diagram. So here's the first iteration of the Sankey diagram. There is a lot of uh, history in Formula One. There's a lot of data. And putting that on a, a print, that first iteration, would have been far too much. You can't really get much of an insight because there's so much going on. So I decided to filter that down. Uh, and only include the top 300 drivers by points. 
Um, no, every driver that had scored more than 300 points. So this was the first uh, iteration of the Sankey. It's kind of the, it formed the centerpiece of the visualization. Um, and then because Formula One evolves, because um, every couple of weeks there's a new race, the data is always changing, uh, I decided earlier this year to go back and redesign some of the charts. And this second version, um, so the first time, and this is something when you're trying to build non-standard charts in, in Tableau, this one uh, took me ages to figure out, this first one. I was kind of hacking around, doing all the different kinds of table calculations, trying to get the curves to work. Uh, and yeah, I, I spent a long time doing it, and I got hugely frustrated with it, basically. The second one, um, I downloaded Ken Flerledge's Sankey tutorial, or Sankey um, kind of template off Tableau Public. And I filled in my data, and it was done within a few seconds, because it's just transferring the data um, from an Excel, a template that he has provided into Tableau, and then the chart is already there, it's existing. So anyone wanting to build Sankey charts, kind of advanced charts, look at look on Tableau Public. Ken Flerledge is, is the perfect example of someone who has actually gone above and beyond kind of creating his own visualizations for people to look at and has created templates where people can actually download the workbook, download the data replace their own, and it's, it's a really nice way of getting quickly to, to some more advanced charts. Next thing I want to quickly talk about is visual metaphors and kind of trying to keep the design of what you're doing uh, in keeping with the actual topic that you're showing. So my, my use case was Formula One. I was kind of lucky in this sense because Formula One have cars that have very, very flashy liveries. They have uh, in this case, we've got a red, a dark blue, and a silvery, um, silvery gray at the back. So instantly, there's a kind of a, a shared frame of reference for Formula One fans of what the colors already mean. So they see red, and even outside of Formula One, red, like Ferrari red, is kind of synonymous with the Ferrari brand. And so I had my color palette already set based on the different colors that the cars race in. The other thing that I took from uh, something like this, so just a picture, was the track. So I needed to decide on a background color, and it could have been white, it could have been black, but I settled on this kind of gray um, track-like surface to give the, the overall feel, look and feel of the Viz something to do with, with uh, like a circuit or a, a racing track. So finally, brought it all together. Um, this is the one that's hanging up in the Tableau Public Viz Gallery. Um, and yeah, you can see the, the kind of gray background, got all the different charts that we've individually had a look at. And then it was about spacing them out, thinking about uh, white space, or in this case, gray space, how the different charts are going to interact with each other, how it flows from left to right. So the Sankey diagram in this case was a really important connector between our drivers and our constructors. So we've got all information about the drivers, Lewis Hamilton, Michael Schumacher, and so forth. Uh, on the left, and then we have a connection in a nice, aesthetically pleasing curve over to the different constructors, so the Mercedes, McLaren, Ferrari, and so on. Um, use my buzzer. Also had very consistent titling throughout. I wanted to show the entire history of Formula One, so I had to kind of split it into lots of different things that I thought were important to encapsulate a particular topic. Um, so had those consistent titles. I've got lines separating them out. So reading left to right, I was using space, um, like the white space or the gray space to kind of separate out the different charts. But going top to bottom, I wanted to separate the different uh, aspects of, of the history of Formula One by using those lines. Final step of the process is, is kind of taking the output from Tableau, putting it into Adobe Illustrator and then whacking that into Adobe Photoshop. So lots of kind of different tools that I'm talking about here, but uh, Illustrator is the one that I actually used to, to pull all it together. And then when you start to put it into Photoshop to get it ready for going onto a website, uh, for going onto kind of a catalog on the Etsy store, that's when you can do these kind of crazy things where it looks like I've sat down there with a camera taking it at very obscure angles. Um, but using some of the 3D functionality within Photoshop, you can kind of create that effect, create lighting effects on the pictures to make them look like uh, 
oh, a, a little bit more professional so that they're kind of ready to go on a, on a shop. Next thing I'll do is just put them up on the shop. So Etsy, uh, there's, there's several different ones. I think Redbubble's a big one. Uh, you've got Printy or Printly. Uh, different things where the actual services will, will fulfill the orders. So I put my designs or my artwork on a website, such as Etsy. Um, and then I'll have a, a printer that will actually go ahead and um, dispatch those goods. They'll, they'll print them, dispatch them to the customer without me having to get involved at all. I simply place the order. And a lot of these now actually have um, kind of APIs that tap into them. So I don't have to do anything at all. I put my artwork up, um, an order comes in, the order then goes to uh, the printing company. The printing company prints it, dispatches it, it arrives with the customer and I pretty much don't have to do anything at all, which is very different to what was happening at the beginning where I was getting them all sent to my house and then spending half my life at the post office sending them on to the customers. Um, but yeah, and then it's really nice getting uh, feedback from kind of examples of where people have started to put them. So a nice uh, example of someone putting the design up in their office. Um, a lot of my customers happen to be girlfriends, wives, buying for kind of stats, nerdy Formula One fans. Um, but yeah, nice to kind of get people seeing what, what people are doing with it in the wild once it's been printed. Just going to recap kind of the flow that I go through, the different tools that I use. RStudio is the one that I use to collect the data. It could be Excel, it could be a database. Um, but RStudio is the one that I use to often pull in information, manipulate it, get it ready, and then put it into Tableau. And Tableau is where I make most of my charts. If I want it to be um, reproducible and I want to kind of run it. So for the chord diagram, for example, the one we saw for, for Chelsea a little bit earlier, I wanted to make sure that that ran for every single Premier League team. Um, so I had a, an R script which basically looped through all of the, the teams in the Premier League, it sucked out their data and then created the actual charts so that I didn't have to do that 20 times within Tableau. But for things like the Sankey diagram, for things like uh, the, the fancy advanced charts, I like using Tableau and then Usually I'll create it in a, a dashboard that's two or three times the size of what I need it so that when I bring it into Illustrator, it, it scales down and it kind of maintains the quality that I need for, for my print. Next up, I'll send it into Illustrator and that's where I'll do some of the um, text additions. So I'll write out a lot of the text because it's not always particularly friendly dragging text onto Tableau dashboards. Uh, so I'll do a lot of the text editing in Illustrator. Next up will be Photoshop. That's where I do the, the more professional stuff. There is a <coughs> uh, really handy functionality where you can actually get uh, the frames kind of sitting as, as if they were sitting on a, um, a podium like this. And then you can drop your image into that frame and it looks like you've sat there and taken the photo of the frame. So Photoshop's really good for the, the last mile of getting it ready to go onto Etsy, onto the final shop. So with that, um, the last thing that I want to say, so Johnny um, had seen some of the, the stuff that I'd done. Johnny Walker from Tableau Public um, had seen the F1 viz and asked whether, instead of just putting the individual charts onto Tableau Public, whether I could put it all together uh, into a single viz on Tableau Public. So I took some time to do that. And um, if you want to go onto Tableau Public, you can download the viz, have a look at uh, all the different chart types, have a look at the design. Um, and uh, yeah, Tableau Public, I'm, I'm an ambassador, so of course I'm going to say this, but it is an amazing platform for people to get inspiration, go and have a look at design, and if anyone hasn't yet had the opportunity to go up to the Viz Gallery, I can recommend going up and checking that out. So that is it. I think uh, I have no idea what the time is, but uh, I've got through all my content, so thank you very much for all coming, and um, got the, the mandatory feedback slide. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>